one of the strong themes is to do it for almost no money. Mm -hmm. And the second theme is to do it without damaging the environment. And the third thing is not to exploit other people or other nations by using their materials or their labor to provide those necessities for myself. The accessibility of this, I don't have to have a wad of cash in my pocket to do yeah. this. This is actually basically free. Part of my uh, philosophy is to build with what's indigenous, waste and indigenous. Our composting toilets, the building, the recycling of windows and doors and all that stuff that we do and burning wood rather than electricity and solar panels and all the rest of it, I think is what we might be forced into in the future. Sustainability is not about some radical new shift and doing things that we've never done before. Generally speaking, it's about revisiting traditional ways of building that we all knew very well a hundred years ago and that in the last, since the, adver, you know, the, the sort of advent of oil, we've somehow collectively forgotten. And really we're coming to a stage that the energy involved in moving materials around uh, is just going to become prohibitive in terms of some of those building options and uh, going more to a local building source uh, is certainly going to become more common in the future. Look around you, what could you build with right here? And they said, well, there's nothing here. Could we have some of these ice cream buckets? And we filled them with sawdust that we got okay. for free. Once it's plastered, it'll be a strong, safe place. We'll dig out like the other houses, yep. dig out the inside once we've got it covered, and it'll sleep three or four people. In some places where this is happening, where, where deconstruction contractors are bidding against demolition contractors, if they're taking down a building that actually has a high value in materials, they can be competitive because of the resale value of the materials. And what we do, uh, my wife and I, in a non-intentional way, is, is try to build a green home in a high-profile area that everybody can walk into and, and um, associate with and be able to try and give people the incentive to build a home that they would actually live in. Um, but there's a lot that can be done when you start taking the land out of private ownership and putting it into public ownership and then start working with the built environment as what people are buying with leases for the land. A lot of the technologies that they're using at the sanctuary in very simple forms are being applied in you know everything from uh, small houses in the city to big high-rises and, and everything in between. Probably something that's easiest for the average person to do in terms of their energy consumption is plant a garden in their backyard. In the richest countries today, it's very difficult to show a positive correlation between increasing incomes and consumption and people's perceived or objective well-being. Uh, it would free up a lot of time. We wouldn't have to be scrambling like rats to, to get more and more if we had sufficiency and uh, more and more time to dedicate to personal development, to family, to community, to a whole array of values that we don't even, that we've lost, frankly then I think we could live quite comfortably on much reduced footprints.